Obama has it, JFK did, Rihanna does have it, and the great German mustache probably did as well. Few months ago there was a lot of media coverage for a term that had gone viral. Big Dick Energy. It's a thing that you need if you want to be a leader. It's a thing that you need if you want people to look up to you. It's a thing that you need if you want to be attractive. And it doesn't have anything to do with being the strong, emotionless, careless alpha male. The thing that you need is charisma. But where does charisma come from and how do you get it? That's the question that I am going to answer today. Welcome to Brains Applied. As always, don't forget to subscribe and to press the bell icon so you receive a notification when I upload a new video next Friday. The great concept of charisma is a mix of emotional and social skills. It allows you to affect people on a deep emotional level and it allows you to create emotional bonds with them. And in contrary to common belief, you are not born with charisma. You can actually train it and that is why you are watching this video. Psychologists have defined that charisma exists out of six parts. The first one being emotional expressiveness. People that have a lot of emotional expressiveness are able to express their emotions in an animated and energetic way and this allows them to affect our emotions as well. And mostly these emotions should be positive. Sometimes if it's really necessary to obtain your goal, it can be negative as well, but remember that it should stay positive as much as possible. Number two is emotional control. People that have a lot of charisma are able to express their emotions very well, but they also should have a lot of control over their emotions. Because you need that poker face. You don't want to lose your temper and you don't want to get out of control mad, because if you ever lose that poker face, you are going to be uncharismatic very, very soon. Number three is emotional sensitivity. This is very important because it allows you to create deep emotional bonds with people. You will have to be able to read emotional cues. Did you know that people are able to read emotional cues that only last up till 17 milliseconds? <laughs> That's really fast. Emotional sensitivity will make you a more caring person because you understand people better. And this creates a deep bond. Next are the social aspects. Social expressiveness. Whereas emotional expressiveness is about using your emotions, social expressiveness is about using your words to engage and to captivate people. You know what they say, the pen is mightier than the sword. And that's just because of the words that you use. Number two is social sensitivity. This one is more complex. It's about knowing social norms and it's about picking up the tiny details in conversations, interactions and social situations so that you can use them in your advantage. Last but not least, there is social control. If you have a lot of social control, you will be able to easily adapt to groups and to feel at ease in certain social situations. People that have a lot of social control are often seen as the leader of the group because they always have a certain grace in their behavior. Remember that these skills need to be balanced. Imagine that you're a person with a lot of emotional expressiveness but no emotional control. People will just start seeing you as an over emotional person. And the next question is, how do I train my charisma? You can train your emotional expressiveness by practicing in front of a mirror or ask a friend for feedback or maybe even take some drama classes. And if there ever is a moment where you think that you reacted too much or too little, reflect on it and think about why it happened and how you can improve yourself. Emotional sensitivity can be trained by observing other people. You can do this in a bar, on the street or even during your favorite TV show. Just mute the sound and try to follow what is happening by watching the character's emotions. Most importantly, work on your social skills. Go out and meet people. You can change yourself if you're not willing to work for it. Work specifically on active listening. 
You don't have to worry about what you are going to say. You have to work on showing understanding to what the other person is saying. Nod, make eye contact and ask questions. And you don't have to talk to everyone, but give the people that you talk to your full attention. And please, don't you dare pulling out your smartphone during a conversation. Also, be careful in your behavior. Don't just blurt out stuff, except for when it actually serves your purpose. Being charismatic has nothing to do with being the loud alpha male. Take for example a look at Elon Musk. The guy is quite introverted, but the dude does have some charisma. People with charisma are poised masters of their own behavior and they are specifically good at active listening and making other people feel good about themselves. And this might not always be very easy. I make mistakes as well, but hey, practice makes perfect. Last, don't forget to be happy and to spread a positive message. Even people with good charisma do have a bad day from time to time, but try to remain positive as much as possible. And if you can, try to give a negative message a positive turn. A great example of such a positive twist is George W. Bush. Bush was not a very charismatic president and people were doubting him a lot. But a few days after 9-11, he gave a speech about hope and about rebuilding America. And after that, he scored an approval rating of 90%. That is the highest approval rating that any US president has ever had. And I believe that you guys can do that as well. And that is what I wanted to tell you today. I hope you really liked this video. If you did, press the like button and don't forget to subscribe so you receive a notification next Friday when I upload a new video. And I will see you guys later.